Mr. President, Madam First Lady, I hope that you enjoyed your time. I appreciate the opportunity to learn about your thoughts and vision. I believe that the unbreakable bond between us, along with your determination, will open up new possibilities for the State of Israel and the entire region. Mr. President, we are happy to see that America is back in the area. America is back again. You marked the defeating of ISIS as one of your top missions. This is most important objective. Israel will do everything in its power in order to assist you in this mission. Israel appreciates America's leadership under your administration in the action you, look, you took in Syria. There are red lines, as it happened in Syria, that must never be crossed. There is a price that must be paid by those who violate the most basic values that makes us human. Further action must be considered in face of the horrors that, that is still taking place on the other side of our borders. Mr. President, the Jewish people return to the historic homeland after 2,000 years of exile. We created a miracle, a, a technological miracle, an economical miracle, a human miracle. And even during our most difficult times, we never gave up on our dream of living here in peace with our neighbors. We reached a peace agreement with our neighbors in Jordan and with our neighbors in Egypt. But we have not yet achieved our mission of living in peace with our neighbors, the Palestinians, and with the rest of the Arab world. Our destiny, Palestinians and Jews, is to live together in this land, Mr. President. We must build trust and cooperation between us. But in order to achieve this, we need new ideas, new energy that will help us move forward together. We can have here an oasis, an international center of tourism, a startup land, Silicon Valley from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. But we must be sure that we don't go to sleep with a dream and wake up with a nightmare, with Iran, ISIS, and Hamas in our borders. In order to dream, we need to be sure that Iran is out, out of our borders, out of Syria, out of Lebanon. I welcome you, and I welcome your willingness to help us move forward. We want to move forward. Mr. President, we want to move forward. And we must do it together, together with America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And shalom. I'm honored to be in the great state of Israel, the homeland of the Jewish people. I am awed by the beauty and majesty of this sacred and very holy land. President Rivlin, Mrs. Rivlin, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for opening your wonderful home and welcoming Melania and myself to your amazing country. And that's what it is. It is an amazing country. What you've done is perhaps has virtually never been done before. On my first trip overseas, I've come to this ancient land to reaffirm the enduring friendship between the United States and the State of Israel. And it will always be enduring. 
and that's number one to me. We are not only longtime friends, we are great allies and partners. We stand together always. This moment in history calls for us to strengthen our cooperation as both Israel and America face common threats from ISIS and other terrorist groups to countries like Iran that sponsor terrorism and fund and foment terrible violence, not only here, but all over the world. Together, we can work to end the scourge of violence that has taken so many lives here in Israel and around the world. Most importantly, the United States and Israel can declare with one voice that Iran must never be allowed to possess a nuclear weapon, never, ever, and must cease its deadly funding, training, and equipping of terrorists and militias. And it must cease immediately. On those issues, there is a strong consensus among the nations of the world, including many in the Muslim world. I was deeply encouraged by my conversations with Muslim world leaders in Saudi Arabia, including King Solomon, who I spoke to at great length. King Solomon feels very strongly, and I can tell you would love to see peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Many express their resolve to help end terrorism and the spread of radicalization. Many Muslim nations have already taken steps to begin following through on this commitment. There is a growing realization among your Arab neighbors that they have common cause with you and the threat posed by Iran. And it is indeed a threat. There is no question about that. I thank both you and Prime Minister Netanyahu for your commitment to achieving peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. I also look forward to discussing the peace process with Palestinian President Abbas. Young Israeli and Palestinian children deserve to grow up in safety and to follow their dreams free from the violence that has destroyed so many lives. The United States and Israel can also bring safety and greater prosperity to our people through stronger ties of trade and commerce. Already, our two countries do a great deal of business together. We have a strong foundation on which to build an even closer trading relationship that benefits both of our countries. I'm going to try and narrow that trade deficit just a little bit. Is that okay? Huh? <laughs> he doesn't mind. He wants to keep it the way it is. I understand. <laughs> Today, we have so many incredible opportunities before us, and my hope for this visit is that we seize every single one of them. I am thrilled to be here on behalf of the American people. I know Israel and America share the same goals, and I have great confidence that we can achieve tremendous success together. We can achieve all of our goals together. President Rivlin, I look forward to working with you and to seeing more of the sacred land and getting to spend time with the remarkable people of Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.